Bean Soup Times is on a mission to create dope content that entertains, educates, and empowers the black community. We keep our ear to the ground. We ask. We report to you. We help black people to share their message. We promote real dialogue. We provide a platform to help give voice to the voiceless. We educate you on how to shop smart. Our passion is to inform you about black events, businesses, organizations, and entertainers. We are black owned. We are black Chicago. We are the award winning Being Sue Times. Greetings, 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 brothers and sisters. This is your brother, your friend, Tori Muhammad. And uh, man, I'm so excited to see you all today. I'm so excited to be another day on top side of the earth. And we have an amazing guest to talk to today. So man, you're gonna, you're gonna be informed, you're gonna be enlightened, and you're gonna be inspired by our next guest. Uh, so I want to make sure that everyone can tell a friend and tell a friend to tune in to the show today, share, like, and create the discussion. Grab you a, a cup of coffee or some tea or some, some juice or whatever and, and sit down and, and, man, enjoy this next show, the Tori Muhammad Show coming to you live from the great city of Chicago. And as you know, I try to always give a quick moment of inspiration and motivation. And I often have to remind people, I was uh, just in a conversation with someone a couple of days ago, and they were talking about what they were going to do. And this is someone I've known for a few years, and I've heard them talking about what they're going to do for about five years now. And they have an excellent idea. They have a great uh, plan laid out. Uh, the only thing they haven't done is actually move out and start doing what they said they would love to do. So it doesn't matter what age you are. It doesn't matter if you're a teenager, uh, a preteen, if you have an idea and a plan in mind, if you are uh, retired, right? There is no time better to get started than right now. So keep planning, keep organizing, keep thinking, keep researching, but also make actual steps beyond the plan to put things into motion. You never know what God has in store for you. And when you start moving out on your idea, then the universe is going to arrange the sources, the resources, the angels and the people to help you bring about what you uh, have in mind today. That's from the teachings of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan uh, or the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is taught by the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. And this young lady that we're gonna talk to today may be the very person you need to be hearing from right now to get your idea off the ground and moving. Because I know many of you have some books in your, in your head and you have children in your head and you wanna, I mean, in your mind and in your heart and you want something for them. So without any further ado, we're going to bring on our next guest for the Tori Muhammad Show, Sister Donna Beasley. Hello, everyone. It's awesome to be here today. Man, it is a pleasure to have you on. Uh, how have you, how you been doing? It's been great. Uh, you know, everything's been uh, uh, good for me. Uh, surprisingly, through COVID, I... Uh, you know, a lot of good things happened to me since it's since actually COVID happened. So I've been really blessed, and you know, it's been an a, an amazing journey. Uh, and you know, doors have opened for me, and opportunities have come my way that actually wouldn't have probably happened had it not been for COVID. So uh, you know, I, I'm I'm blessed for you know this year. It's been a great year. Man, well, that's wonderful, and you know, we're gonna get to a good discussion here, I think, but. I want to highlight something that you were saying here. Opportunities are coming your way, 
because of the preparation and the background and the experience that you have, you're able to take advantage of those opportunities that come your way. So for people who don't know Donna Beasley, uh, who are tuning in to the show, uh, the, she's the founder of Kazoom Kids Books. And we met a few years ago, um, our co-writers writing on a project. Right? <laughs> we did. At City yeah. Theater. Uh, a few moons ago. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> and we along. Well, but that was a fun. It was a fun time. Yep, that was some fun times. We along with some other writers. I uh, did uh, a couple of comedy shows, sketch comedy shows. So you've been a writer for a while, but talk a little bit about some of your experience and background that leads you to be uh, this uh, this entrepreneur that you are right now. So I, you know, in, in a way, I'm a, a serial entrepreneur in that, you know, I've done quite a few things <laughs> over the last few couple decades. Uh, I was in the record business uh, when uh, you and I uh, worked on that program. Afterwards, you started being Sue Times, and I actually started into travel writing. And I published a travel magazine, uh, a romance travel magazine, uh, which I did for several years. Uh, but one day I was... Uh, uh, you may not notice about me, but I had been in publishing once before. I had published children's books, you know, really early. I mean, like the late 1990s, early 2000s, I was publishing children's books. And I started then because I couldn't find books for my niece. Uh -huh. So uh, my niece now has a daughter. <laughs> and I was out shopping for her one day downtown Chicago. And I went to five bookstores. I couldn't find any black children's books. I was really stunned by this. I mean, really, um, I just couldn't almost comprehend it. In this day and age, you, you know, it's hard to find a black children's book. And I did a little research and discovered that only 5% of children's books that year had actually been written by people of color. Wow. And we're, I was blown we're, away. We're, and this is, this is almost 20 years later than when I went in before. Wow. And nothing had changed. I, uh, you know, I made up my mind that moment to get into back into the children's book business and to get out of the magazine business because the world doesn't really need another romance travel magazine. But I felt that the world really could use diversity in children's books. And so that's what led me uh, on this journey. Wow. So what was what was why was that so important? Talk a little bit about why it was so important that that you were looking for some black children's books in the first place? Well, first of all, you got to look at the numbers. Almost 50% of the children ages of five to nine are multicultural in this country, black, Hispanic, immigrants, almost 50%. And for them and for us to have children's books that don't reflect who they are, I think, you know, is a travesty. The second thing is I think that children should see themselves in the pages of a book. It's important that they see them, them their families, their community, their culture. Uh, you know, it's important. And when our children see themselves, you know, they can handle things that may come up in their own lives, like, you know, bullying, for example, which is a popular one in that age group. Uh, you know, being teased, you know, black girls, a lot of times, I see you got Alyssa Mar Marissa up there. And that's the story that came about because uh, the author's daughter was being bullied about her hair. So it just goes to show you that, um, you know, how important it is that um, this has to change. That, that, that's my bottom line on this, that the diversity in children's books has to improve. It's just important. It's important for uh, kids in their community. You know, uh, my sister-in-law is a school teacher. And uh, one of the, the catalysts for me to go forward with this was she told me she was making her own books in her classroom. You know, she teaches special ed. Wow. Why should a teacher have to make her own books? You know, it, it's it's sad. It was just, you know, I just felt compelled. You know, I, um, spiritually speaking, I feel like if the problem bothers you, then it's important for you to do something about it. You know, and you have to step out and make a difference. If it's bothering you, you you need to do to, to do something about it. And that's what I stepped into the space to do something about it. Man, and so how long has Kazoom Kids Books been in uh, existence? So, uh, well, of course, we started uh, with a concept. So I'd say about 2015. 
Uh, and the concept was like, how do I how do I make my business different than all the other publishing companies out there? And my idea was I wanted to be because I'd been a digital publisher. My magazine, my romance travel magazine was a digital magazine. I love digital publishing. And I thought I'll, I'll bring that to children's books. And so uh, I wanted to see really do books that had sight, sound, motion and animation. I thought that would be so unique. Uh, particularly in the black community. And so I went to a friend of mine, Pam Rice, who's an, uh, an, a wonderful artist, graphic designer and illustrator in her own right, mm -hmm. and told her my idea. And, you know, is it possible to do? You know, that's, a, that's one thing. If, if you got a lot of money, anything is possible. But if, you know, right. I'm a South girl from the South Side, is it possible for me to do is mm -hmm. what comes up. And man, she did a fantastic job on our very first book. It's called Zigzag Zoo Opening Day. And in that book, the monkeys are jumping, the, the uh, fish are swimming, the geese are running. Uh, and it was just a fantastic job. And from that point on, I realized, of course, it could be done. And uh, so we started uh, uh, doing it. And the question becomes, how do you as a consumer play it for your child? And that's where the trouble started, Tori, <laughs> because that technology didn't exist. Right. Um, I mean, Apple had it, but Apple doesn't license their technology. And so um, it was a problem. And I tried a couple things that did not work. You know how entrepreneurship is, you know, so that right. roller coaster. Uh, and man, but finally, I discovered um, the software that I needed uh, in Europe. Uh -huh. And I uh, and that's what I did. And, and we created an app that has uh, now we have 12 books in that app that have sight sound motion and animation uh and we have um six books that we're doing this year that will be you know ultimately in the app so that's that's how we got our start and you know what we're up to um so they can go people can go right to they go on the app they go to kazoo kids books they can look on google and iphone and pull it down Right. So it is uh, the app itself is free and you get the first two books free. So the books I was telling you about uh, Zigzag Zoo, our very first book, and then a book that I wrote called Case and Skype uh, is those two books are free. So anybody can can get those books. Uh, but also uh, this holiday season, we're doing something. We're going retail. So we are currently getting our books up on Amazon and not all up there yet. But they will be uh, over the next 30 days. Uh, so our books will be available uh, on Kindle and on Amazon and anywhere ebooks are sold. Uh huh. Wow. So, I mean, I, I would love, I, I can't wait to see. I haven't seen the uh, it on the app, but I know children love to be able to watch stuff moving and jumping around. And yeah, playing. absolutely. So that's a great interaction with them. So, yeah, yeah. man, this is absolutely wonderful. So, but of course, you're a publishing company and you didn't just stop with all of the different ideas that you have for books, but you're helping other people to write books as well who may have a desire or an idea to write a children's book. So how how does that work? Well, you know, as I mentioned, there aren't that many writers writing black children's books that are uh, published. And so what I'm trying to do is really rally support from the community because my competitors, for example, can license, you know, children's material from Nickelodeon, Disney, and, you know, other places right. like that. But in the black community, we can't do that because it doesn't exist. So um, in order for these books to really impact children and to really, you know, get a bunch of them into the community, our, the community has to write them. I mean, that's the bottom line. So uh, I go out into the community and basically recruit writers, try to get them to, you know, write about their culture, their family, their communities. Uh, and, you know, and it can be, you know, we focus on black and Latino market, but it's, I'm open to anyone who has a story that they want to tell based on their experience and their home, their family, their culture, community. Uh, and so I'm reaching out, uh, asking people to do this. And one of the things that uh, happens is some people do respond and they submit stories to me, but they're not always very good. And I feel like that they would be if with a little training. 
And so I'm doing a course actually uh, coming up uh, at the end of this start, starting the end of the month uh, on doing how to write the multicultural children's books. I'm using my five step strategy that I use my action plan when I'm writing a children's book. Uh, I follow these five steps to make the process easy and repeatable. And so that's what I'm trying to do. Train people, train writers, mothers, grandmothers, fathers. You know, if you're, you're interested in writing for our children, they need you. And so um, I find that a lot of people, they lack the confidence or they lack the skills or they don't think they can do it. And so I wanted to put together a program where they'd be comfortable working with, you know, working with me. Uh, they would be able to uh, not only take the course, but I have a weekly I'll have a weekly coaching session so that they can if they have questions in the middle of the week. So that uh, my goal is that at the end of the year uh, that we're going to have, uh, you know, more children's books. And my course is designed for people to do it in 40 days. So to write a story they love in 40 days. So that's uh but that's why, because we, don't we have need to be English major, right? They don't have to have major and be perfect in English, no. right? No. Or, no. or any kind of previous type of writer. They can they can come no. in with the course with no experience. Right. And if you're an artist but you don't know how to write, you can still come in, you know, with an idea with pictures and you know, we can help get your story out. Uh, if you're a writer, you don't need illustrators. You know, we, you know, the publisher, we handle all that the illustration. Uh -huh. But if you're an illustrator, but you want to write your own stories, you also should come to the class uh, because uh, you know you can learn those pro that process, and you know it's great if you can illustrate and write your own stories. So in forty days, they can forty days, you're gonna have, have a story they love, and the timeless book that would be something that might really uh you celebrate their, their history their culture their family and something that their future generations of that of that family or that writer that author can look forward to absolutely i mean it's something that uh you know you know i tell people every story that i write is not for commercial you know it doesn't have to be commercial but every story i write that i love i can share with my my grand my grandchildren my you know my nieces my nephews my you know it doesn't always have to be about selling on Amazon. Sometimes you're writing a, a story because it's important to you. It's important to you to tell the story of, you know, maybe one of your family members. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, you're the first immigrant here and, you know, your journey was something that you want to share uh, to, to help other people who are just, you know, immigrating. Uh, it could be something that uh, from your own life, something that, you know, was important to you. Um, one of the things, my first children's book as an author, the first one I wrote, uh, I wrote that book because I grew up in a musical family and I had no musical talent. Aww. So my, <laughs> my, uh, my immediately fa family wasn't that musical, but my cousins, I come from a huge family. I got 65 first cousins and my, um, and my mother was one of 20. Well, my aunts, my uncles, my cousins, they could all sing, dance play instruments, you know, they were awesome. <laughs> uh, but my brother was the only one in, in my family, immediate family that played, he had a band and he would play in the basement. And my younger brother and I, we used to go downstairs and watch his band rehearse and play in the basement. And, uh, you know, the very first book I called it, wrote is called Music in the Family. And it's about a kid who always wanted to get in his family's band, but was just not good enough. <laughs> but that story came from my right. childhood, right? you know, and so that's what I want people to do. I want them to reach back and tell those stories that matter to them. Uh, and so that's what my course is about, getting that out, getting people to get that on paper. Man, that's beautiful. So people can, how can people get, uh, be a part of the course, get into the course? Okay, well, certainly, uh, you know, reach out to me uh, in terms of uh, my uh, website. My email, Donna at KazoomKidsBooks.com uh, is the best way. Uh, you know, you can um, also, uh, you know, reach out to me on Facebook and, you know, you can register for the class. The class is coming up uh, later this month. So the sooner you, you can you know, register, uh, the better. So if you, you know, you're interested, 
definitely contact me uh, at, at my website is the best way. Okay. Donna at kazoomkidsbooks.com. Donna at kazoomkidsbooks.com. I'm scrolling along the bottom there. So, <laughs> uh, so writers, please, yeah. your children need you. Uh, you can really make a difference uh, in the in in a child's life. So I hope you'll definitely join us. Definitely, we are, we definitely we think this is a great this is a great business you have a great uh, need. You know, I, one of the things that we what we would talk about when we were in the writers group together was that African proverb into the lion's right history, the tale of the hunt will always glorify the hunter. Right, that's, and that's right. the theme of right. you know, we have to tell our own story. We have to, and and it's not too many. It's it's no, it's no. Oh, it's too many books about us out there, right? No, First, not enough. No, not at all. Yeah. And, then, and then, if 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 twenty thousand people start writing books, it still wouldn't be enough. <laughs> it wouldn't be enough. Really, I tell people that all the time. If all of the big five major companies. Double their output of black books, it still wouldn't it be a drop in the bucket. Be a drop right. in the bucket. Right. So man, speaking we of books, though, that. I also oh go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say, speaking of books, I also want to mention that I have two books coming out this fall, and mm -hmm. one of them is uh, based on uh, uh, black aviation in the early days. It's called My Mama Is Flying That Plane, and uh, the other one is about uh, black cowboys in the West, and it's called Blaze Barton's First Cattle Drive. And the good thing about those are, again, it's a, you know, it's a twist on, on his, those, both of those books are based on actual things. So at the, even though they're fiction stories, but at the back of the books, it allows me to put in, you know, I have a page called what's the real black history. And it allows me to talk right. about black cowboys, right. for example, and, uh, and to tell the story of the early years of black aviation and the people were that were involved in it, William Powell and uh, uh, you know some of the way in this in this particular story, our, our mother wants to be a pilot, and uh, you know she goes to a, a school that's actually run by a black man, and you know I was stunned by that. I mean he had his own plane manufacturing company. I didn't even know that, and wow. I just had to write about that, write write yeah. about them in that company, and uh, so it's my way of it's a story. But at the end, I get to tell what the real black history is. And, you know, almost that. all my stories feature family. Man, you know, I love that. You know, I was a, a history major in, in college. So I love history. I love history. It's so important to us. Uh, yeah. It gives us a foundation of where we at and where we're going. Exactly. You know, to get the yeah. children to get involved and learn and get that impressed in their brain early on. That's that's a, that's that's life changing. So mm -hmm. is there a price for the course? And how can what are people? How, what's, how much does it cost to be in the course? Well, the course is actually two ninety seven. However, anyone from your show can get if they if they mention your name, they get a hundred dollars off. Woo! So, man, that is an excellent price. And again, because they're gonna learn something that they may have 10, 15, 20 books in them, and right. so for that and small investment, you're creating uh. What's the word I'm looking for? Passive income or residual income <laughs> right. off of what That's you true. do one time that producing that book that can be sold for years and years. Exactly. So, man, and Donald, we cover a lot of stuff, you know. Uh, and we cover a lot of stuff, you know. The the it's six modules, and the modules talk about, uh, you know, a lot of uh, ways to get your 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 book out there and to get your words to you know flow, you know, because stories have a kind of uh, a flow to them and a, and a beat right. to them. And so we get into that and uh, you'll have a story you love. Man, I love it. So for romance, writing the children's book, I guess one leads to the other. I love it. Is there anything that we didn't uh, cover that you want to make sure we mention? Uh, no, no, I'm, that, that's, uh, you know, what's uh, going on in my world. And, uh, you know, if I could do anything in terms of last words, I want to remind you to support black authors, black illustrators, uh, you know, buy our books, uh, support black publishers. Uh, you know, without you, we can't survive. So thank you for your support. Right. That's beautiful. And you know what? The illustrators, I'm, I'm a, are there a lot of black illustrators out there that are ready to write? Uh, or illustrate for children's books? 
there there are quite a few not as many as there there could be uh you know so it's you know it's a it's a challenge even finding uh illustrators sometimes but there are some really nice uh illustrators black illustrators out there we use them uh quite often so uh you know their work is really beautiful in fact the two books that i was talking about earlier one of them is a uh, local artist edwin the Her edwin edwin the artist uh harris uh and the other one is uh, out of los angeles uh gwen robinson and uh, both of them have done a, a fantastic job on those two books that I was talking about earlier. And, uh, you know, it's really, uh, they're going to be really beautiful books. Uh -huh. Okay. You know, I'll talk to my daughter. She just graduated uh, with a degree in design and art technology. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know, she definitely has some incredible art skills. But I don't know if she's ever thought about illustrating for children's books. Yeah, yeah. So, if she, you know, if she's interested, definitely have her give me a call. I definitely yeah. will. Sister Donna, it's a pleasure as always. And enjoy talking to you. And uh, we're going to help, you know, keep the word out here. You all heard. Get into the course. If you mention the Tory Muhammad show, you get $100 off. So we encourage you all, man, get to writing. We need more authors out here writing for our children. Yes, so Thank being, you for man, having me on today. Man, it's been a pleasure. We'll be talking to you soon. All right. Take all care. Right. All right. Peace. Peace. All right. So that's Sister Donna. Man, we love and appreciate her for what she shares and what she's doing. And um, again, man, I, we encourage you, man, get into this course. Go to KazoomKidsBooks.com and uh, learn about what it takes to be an author. Get the mechanics down. You may be an author in other pieces, but this would be something for you to really get to know. So we listen, we're going to take a quick like 30 second break and I'm going to be right back. And we're going to have on uh, 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 a foodie for the foodies out there. We're going to have a great guest coming on the show in just a second. So y'all don't go anywhere. And we are going to be right back in about 30 seconds. All right. All right. We are back. So um, we got another great guest coming on in just a few minutes. But brothers and sisters, listen, I want to make sure that you all know about the people who make this show possible. And if, if you are a business owner and you uh, want to help make this show possible, I think you should be reaching out to us as well. Uh, but first of all, let me give some love and appreciation for uh, my brother, my friend, Sean Michelle's homemade ice cream owner, Yaya Muhammad, been the consistent sponsor of the show. Let me shout out uh, my good friend and um, another longtime uh, client of mine, Stephanie Hart with Brown Sugar Bakery. And then we also got to give some love, man. He has been around 28 years, uh, Dolphin with Dan Soul Food, Dan. Uh, and his mother, 
Mama Dan have been around for uh, 28 years serving up great soul food um, on the uh, south side of Chicago. All of these are south side businesses. Sean Michelle's Homemade Ice Cream is in Bronzeville. Uh, Brown Sugar Bakery is in Chatham. And um, Dan Soul Food is in that, what's that, Auburn Gresham area. So make sure you Google them. Make sure you, matter of fact, you can go to Black Chicago Eats website. And we got, we're going to be doing some great things. We got some upcoming stuff to the website coming up real soon. We're going to want y'all to check out. Uh, but it's going to be on and popping. And then we also have uh, Chateau's uh, Men's Shaving Kit. We appreciate them for uh, being a part of the program, uh, being a part of our family, right? So let me check them, let me check them out. So of course, this is Kazoom Kids. Uh, let me see, let me go to Facebook. Let me see if I can play something for you all uh, real quick here. Bear with me, bear with me. Patience, patience. Let me see, let me make sure I gotta keep coming back to make sure it's popping up. It look like it's popping up. Uh, yep, so we can go to my Facebook page. And then where's my search? You know, Facebook can start this new page. Uh, this new uh, look. I had to get used to it. So, but here's Chateau's Men's Shaving Kit. They're doing this for the brothers and sisters who are shaving. And check this one out right here. Y'all gotta check this one out. For my beard are from Chateau Naturals. They have the hemp seed beard oil here and then as well as a men's balm for the beard oil. I love that, this one, the aroma that comes off the beard, that just that comes all out of the beard after using the products. Very natural, very beautiful. My beard is made out of diamonds. It really highlights the, the beauty of my beard. I really love that. I recommend them all the time. If you have a beard, if you have hair on your head, you should be using these products. Now there's a shampoo that comes with this. There's after gym, after gym uh, spray that comes with it to, to keep the oils into the beard and keep the shine and keep the luster and keep the health of the hair. Being that they're all natural products, natural to the body. So is nothing adverse is going into or out of you because of this use. And it keeps us and they help keep the skin under the beard very healthy as well. So I'm a huge proponent of these products. I've been using, I've had a beard for about eight years of my life now. I've been using these products uh, for the last four years and I haven't switched. I haven't gone to anything else. Before they run out, I'll make sure I already have backup. And then once that's done, I'll make sure I have more on the way. So I never without it. The difference for me is my beard shines better. Um, the natural oils in my face, uh, they come out more. Uh, and it's not distracting uh, when I'm walking around, um, sweating, things of that nature. It just feels very natural. The scent is great. And then my hair is very healthy as well. Man, so that's our people. That's, you know, that's some of the... the uh... So right now we're going to do a before and after the use of the products. Is right now, I don't have anything in my beard. Oh, All I got about this part. Check this out. in my beard prior to you can see how it's done beard on its own naturally and now i'm going to move forward you use the product show you how i use the products start with the hemp seed oil so start with the hemp seed oil here i said it before start with just dabbing in the beard you can see where it's at Come with the brush. So that's step one. 
and you can already see the difference in the beard. It's shining, it's beautiful, it's lush. Diamonds. So next, I'll finish it off with a beard ball. And you don't need too much. Maybe a dime size, maybe a quarter size. Just depends how I feel, how dry my beard might be from... Spread it in the hands. Spread it in the beard. Make sure I get the skin under it well. You can use the excess. I generally just use it on my head. It's such. And then I'll come finish it off. And that's it. You can now you can perfectly see the difference in the beard from the before, simply from the shampoo and the conditioner to the use of the hemp seed oil, and then the finishing with the beard balm itself. It's shining. It's lush. It looks very luxurious. If you want a strong, healthy-looking beard with a very natural shine, Chateau Natural beard beard products you should be using. All right, that's Chateau Men's Products, uh, shaving cream and moisturizer, and the whole. She has a whole kit. It's about about ten different products, man, to help you keep that beard fresh. So. Um, if you uh, have a beard or you got somebody in your family that has a beard <laughs> and you care about them, man, get them that. You can go to Whole Foods and get these products. Um, they have not all of them. Go to the website if you want to pick and choose the different products, but they got some of them at Whole Foods. Go check them out, test them out, and tell us what you think about them. So that's one of our people from Chateau. We want to make sure we highlighted her. And man, we are excited, man, to bring on our next uh, guest. They uh, they are some true shakers and movers. And let me see. Want to make sure I need to see them on the screen before I bring them. On. Oh yeah, I see them. I see them. And hold on, we're gonna bring this up right quick. And uh, man, we're excited to talk to these uh, young ladies. So let me. Plug them in right now. Oh, okay. That's, you don't need to see that just yet. We're going to bring them on first. Taylor Tacos in the building. Hey, everybody. Yeah, move that screen in. Get the first lady in there now. Get the first lady now. <laughs> We're doing great. How are you doing? Man, I am doing excellent. How are you all doing? Good. Yeah, it's, it's a good day. It's a good day. We just got out of class. We're a part of the NEL, the Neighborhood Entrepreneurship Lab, fifth cohort. And we're really excited about that because it puts us with some business mentors and they really help us kind of unleash a new product we have coming out. And at the end, we get a $20,000 grant. So that's always fantastic. Man, that's beautiful. So let me, let me make sure people don't, I want y'all to know, viewers, listeners, that this is Taylor Tacos, man. Taylor Tacos has, they were a favorite at the Taste of Black Chicago, and uh, they've been shaking and moving throughout the city. So I want you all to tell us about, I, I see some stuff that I've never seen on a taco before. So, <laughs> so we're going to get into it. But first, tell us a little bit about how you all got started and uh, what's been the inspiration for Taylor Tacos. Yeah. So, I mean, Taylor, like everybody asks, like, how, do, how did this come about? You know, Taylor Tacos is just a hardworking love story for real. Like I started the very first Taylor Taco was made in 2014 at my dad's birthday party and everybody loved it. And they're like, these are really good. And I'm like, they are good. You know, maybe I should do something about this. And so it took me about two years to perfect the recipe. And then I, that was the time that I met her and she just made, she brought her little expertise and her amazing food knowledge and flavor profiles. And together it was just a match made in heaven. And Taylor's Tacos was truly established and born to be, you know, st authentic street style tacos with a whole lot of soul. Man, I love it. And listen, you know, you hear a lot of people talk about they know how to make great food, right? But not <laughs> only... Y'all perfecting the food, but you all are doing some great stuff in business. And I know because 
I see you growing. I see you moving. How, how what, what was that? Was that a change? Was that you had to do a shift? You know, did Maya bring something in and make this a bit, make it a real business where you all have been what, going from, from, from cooking for dad to y'all got a food, a food truck, you, you delivering food, y'all in docks. So, man, this is y'all doing some great stuff. Yeah, I mean, first it just came with just believing that we could even do it um, and then finding and tapping into resources, you know, because I didn't really have, you know, neither one of us really had role models or people that we could say, okay, we've seen them do it so we can do it. It was more so we really had to put our work boots on and network and find out how we can break out and make this thing, you know, a, a bona fide business. Um, and so I think but just between the two of us, She's like all flavor and food and I'm kind of like all business and logistics. And so I think together, that's why I think we've been so successful because we do kind of have that yin and yang. And, you know, she's much more the, the calm, cool and collected and I'm more of the firecracker. And I think that that really helps us as well. So I think it's just kind of the best of both worlds uh, is the reason uh, to walk to part of our success. What would you say? Yin and yang is so important. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think we just got busier. Like, uh, <laughs> like uh, I mean, we've had to figure things out because we there's more of a demand, and we have more at stake. Um, you know, and like honestly, as you're growing and as you're making more money, you have to make sure that you have a good foundation. So, man, that's you know, you know, figure it out. True sure that. And we wanted to, you know, it's, it's so unfortunate, but just the stereotypes that are that come along with black businesses. And we really focus on breaking those barriers every day um, to be an organized, you know, professional two black women at that, you know, queer women at that um, who just come and give you great service. Well, quality is important, not only with our service, but especially with the food we, we, we've seen. You know, especially working in an incubator space where we come in contact with hundreds of chefs every day, just how the care. It's crazy how you work in the food business, but you don't have any care about the food. <laughs> so it's so important to us because you right. truly can taste the love, the passion and the nutrition um, that's within the food that we create. Right. Right. That's what's up. So tell me about your logo. Y'all have a y'all have a, a interesting <laughs> logo. Let me see if I can pull it up while you talk about it. <laughs> That's so funny you say that because we actually just got out of a meeting. Oh no, that's not our logo. No, not yet. Here we go. Hold on. I was gonna say, uh -uh, that's somebody else. Since 1965, we weren't even a twinkle in the eye in 1965. <laughs> but um, our, it's funny. I was saying that's funny Wait, that you no, asked no. that because we actually just got out of a meeting with like some new website developers that we're working with, and they were asking like, you know, what was what's behind the logo, and and. We really, I mean, a lot of people are like, is it a pickle? It's actually a cactus. <laughs> it's a cactus. We're trying to give that desert vibe and really let you know that it's, we're trying to stay true to an authentic Mexican feeling, but still giving you that soul, that swag of these two black girls that are making these delicious, authentic street tacos. Right, right. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, she's got a little cleavage. She's not afraid to be out here, but you know, she, <laughs> and she's got her little scully. I think that's a little bit of me. You know, we're, we're city girls, but we can make some some bomb Mexican inspired food. Right. And so that's what Taco Bay is all about. So okay, there it is. It's coming up now. I don't know. Uh, people had to see it in just a second here, but yeah, I love that logo. It, it definitely it says a lot, and it's a you you want to hear the story behind it because it's a it's a taco logo that tells a story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she out. definitely beats to the sound of her own drum, and I think that 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 that's Maya and I. You know, um, I'm real, I'm real urban and street. I would say, and Maya's a little bit more earthy, calm, like I said before. And I think it encompasses both of us. Man, that's what's up. And so, talk about the different things that you all offer, right? I know people. Man, is it half the local showing on oh, my scene? Yeah. Oh yeah, there yeah, she is. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so, so we offer everything. What don't we offer is probably the easiest, the easier question. Right, right. So let me see. Let me go back to. I saw some a few. Did you have some pictures? Maybe on your Facebook page. But talk about mm -hmm. some of the different types of tacos you have and how you put that soul into it. 
Yeah, so our most popular tacos, um, what we like to call our signature tacos, are our extra juicy chicken, our savory steak, our awesome AF asparagus, which actually just went out off the menu because it's out of season right now. Um, we have our sweet popping potato and probably another crowd favorite, our sexy crispy shrimp. So those are our five signature. We offer over 20 different tacos. And I think some of the ones that people are really excited to try that are on our specialty menu are our agave mustard fish. We also, also have our birria tacos and we also have what would you say another favorite would be? Uh, definitely our salmon, our slam and salmon, and then definitely our brunch selection of tacos. So we have like steak and steak and egg. We also have what we like to call the Obama, which we got kind of a play from Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles, where it's our uh, extra juicy chicken mix, mixed with our sweet pop and potato, some eggs, scrambled eggs, and some extra cheese. So there's a lot of fun tacos that everybody has to try. Hopefully once we can reconvene in larger groups again, we can start running our taco paloozas where we offer all the tacos at once so people can really get a chance to try them. And so, and you have a, a food truck too? Uh, so we don't have a, our own food truck. We actually collaborate with another company called DuJour where we work with them with the, um, their food truck. But uh -huh. we do pop up because um, we do have a satellite kitchen inside of Persona Lounge, which is 408 South Wells. So we're there about five, six days a week. And then of course you can get our tacos um, over at Doc's Fish on 35th and King Drive. Um, and then uh, anywhere else that we pop up, we set up a live service stand. So it's real, we're, you know, we're, we're cooking it right in front of your face. We're serving it up, Takieta style, and it's a it's a good time. Man, that's a, man, how did y'all pull that off? You and Doc's Fish with the tacos. That's excellent. You so know, people like know at any time, they know they can get over there and get some tacos. Uh, but at, then if they want them delivery, y'all do delivery on what? Mm -hmm. Is that on Tuesdays? That's Taco Tuesday, right? Yes. So we have kind of, because we were using a private service, so we switched to pickup right now just as we figure out how we're going to, because you know, now that the stay at home order is, is over because we were covering almost like 10 miles. Uh -huh. Now, you know, that's kind of shifted now that everybody's kind of back on the street a little bit more. So we're really just trying to figure out how we can best what our, our delivery range will be so right. that as many people as possible can enjoy the food. Right, yeah, yeah. I made my, made my five miles now. For, for a minute, when it was slow out right. there. Well, before we can lift from the west side in fifteen minutes. Now, Love not it. so much. So right. we're trying right. to figure exactly. out uh, how we can make this as efficient as possible for everyone. Exactly, man. So, man, we appreciate y'all. We love, um, you know. Of course, I gotta put me an order in. I got. Man, I'm just gonna go to doc. <laughs> And, yeah, uh, please you know, get me some tacos because mm -hmm. I I got a craving now. Obviously, yeah, we and we can't wait till we can get back out. And once this, you know, we get a handle on this whole pandemic situation, and we can come back out to the the taste of Black Chicago because we had so much fun. That was actually our first, our very first large scale festival that we did. Mm -hmm. Was that about two and a half years ago or so? Right. Yeah. And now just to look at our growth and just that time period has been phenomenal, and we have you to thank for it. So mm -hmm. thank you <laughs> so yeah, much. That's what's up? We were we are, we are honored to be a part of that story and being that first big. Festival that that was our first big festival. Right? <laughs> so it was the first, first one. Everybody. Yep, and um, yep, we're gonna be looking forward to getting it back next year. Hopefully, if everything is settled down and you know we're back to doing big events, but you know I, I think still people may have a mask out there to <laughs> next summer. Oh, I don't well. blame them. We will too. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So well, how can of course we'll be went to the website. So it's Taylor Taco Chicago. What's the what's the address of the website? Yes, it's, so it's Taylor's with an S, tacos with an S, Chicago dot com. Taylor's Tacos. Uh, we'll put it up there so in case people want to get to it. Yeah, follow us on Instagram. Yeah. That's probably our main the main place that we are. But of course, it's all copied over to Facebook and our website. Right. Um, but yeah. find us, please. We're all over the city. We you know now that things are starting to pick back up, we're of course, taking the precautions that we that we need, but we're there and we're ready to feed you. Yep, and you see, you got a great website. So people can go straight to the website and place the orders, figure out the hours and all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, of course. And we're working on hopefully, fingers crossed, we have a goal that we're going to sign the lease to our own catering kitchen 
uh, this month. So put, put, up, put your good juju out there for us because we need it just to make sure that the negotiations go well. But pretty soon you'll be able to come to the catering Taylor's Tacos, our own catering kitchen, not located inside of the incubator space. So Man. and it's good the incubator space has been to us. Let me not, you know, like that's it's been so great. That has helped propel our business just as much. But it is time to have a place to completely call. Right. You know, even the baby in the womb, at some point it gets too big for the womb. It's got to come out. Exactly. It, it is time. It is time. Our head has been hooked. <laughs> yep. I'm not, we're not mad at the womb, but it's just time <laughs> to go. <laughs> exactly. So, but yep. thank you just so much. Thank you for this wonderful platform. Thank you for everything that you've done. Thanks for the calls and for helping us just with our marketing. You know, it takes a village. It really does. And we wouldn't be where we are if it wasn't for all the shoulders that have, that have hoisted us up. So thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's our pleasure. We, we'll be talking real soon. We're working on a delivery aspect. We want to, we wanted to have it ready last month, but we're still working out a few kinks on it. But, uh, you know, hopefully that'll be a part of y'all solution where our team with Black Chicago Eats to Go will be able to deliver that food for you. That's perfect. Well, yep. We'd love to know more. Yeah, absolutely. One day we're going to get some helicopters. We'll work on that part, too. <laughs> Helicopter that food right in the people. <laughs> well, beans. <laughs> yeah. All right. So all thank right. you. I appreciate y'all. And we'll be talking to y'all soon. Okay. All right. Thanks. Have, have a great day. day. All right. Peace. Bye-bye. All right. That was Taylor Tacos. You all heard some of the delicious flavors and, and opportunities they have for you to explore that authentic street taco with some soul. So we appreciate them uh, for coming on the Tori Muhammad show. And we are going to be closing out this show. Uh, we appreciate all of you as our listeners. We encourage y'all help us to grow this show. If you have someone you think we should have on the show, let us know. We're looking for co-hosts. We're looking for sponsors. We're looking to take it to the next level. And we got so many more amazing announcements we're going to be doing something, um, you know, we always got something that works, right? We always are bringing you something new and interesting that helps to provide a solution to problems that we see. And so, um, of course, we got Black Chicago East for the director. We, we have been some times for the news and we're going to be working on something for uh, to help boost and strengthen the uh, black Muslim economy. So many people call me, whether they're Muslim or not, asking me for references. You know, you know, if you want to eat somewhere that doesn't have any pork, right? Then you know to go to the Muslims, uh, and and be be rest assured that you're gonna get that. If you want to go somewhere, or you are, matter of fact, if you um, are looking for a handyman, or someone in construction, someone in that does, you know, HVAC, heating and cooling, and all these different uh, business. Um, Sometimes the businesses need them for their business or you may need them for your home. Then, you know, uh, so many of y'all call me because y'all want a Muslim because y'all feel that the Muslim is going to be fair and honest with you. So we want to give you all a source and a place where you all can reach out and find all of the black Muslims. So when we talk about buying black, buy black, black Christian. Right. We want to be able to have places where we can identify those people that we want to support. And so uh, we're working with Sister Sajda Muhammad, formerly known as Sister Wendy Muhammad, and she's and me and her and Sister Letha uh, Wilson are putting together this uh, whole program for you for uh, uh, connecting and learning and growing and supporting Black Muslim businesses. And uh, we're excited about that. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be coming real soon. But with that, we're going to close out. We appreciate you all, as always, for tuning in. I appreciate the text messages and the comments on the Facebook page. And we are going to be uh, back real soon with another show. So stay tuned, stay encouraged, stay focused, and stay black. This is Tori Muhammad with the Tori Muhammad Show. And we are out, and we'll be talking to you real soon. Sean Michelle's Homemade Ice Cream is the only place to go when the ladies crave delicious, old-fashioned, homemade ice cream. Their vanilla tastes just like Grandma used to make it. With over 35 flavors, all made with the freshest ingredients, Kathy has never had banana pudding ice cream this good. 
It's homemade ice cream the way you remember, and Sean Michelle's doesn't upset your stomach. Enjoy in store or take it to go. Sean Michelle's, fall in love again. First time customers, buy one, get one free. 